Glory be to God who gives us the word. May God write that word on our hearts and may God and God alone receive glory, honor, and praise. We continue the Lenten journey this morning, a journey that began this past Wednesday when we initiated the journey with penitence, ashes, and food for the journey before us, both physical and spiritual. Lent is that time in the church year when we are particularly introspective and reflective. We use the days of Lent to size up our own lives as God's people and compare who we are to who God created us to be. That time of reflection and deliberation usually finds us wanting. This Lenten season, our worship services will focus on the theme, the dry season. Lent can be a dry time, an arid time, a time when we long to grow in the grace and love of God, but when we encounter only roadblocks and obstacles to that growth. The psalmist said it for us all. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Like the dust bowls of days gone by, our souls cry out to God for the rain of God's grace and love to water us and to allow us to live and grow. Those dry seasons come to all of us from time to time. We've all known what it's like to walk in the spiritual desert, feeling dried out and parched with our spirits shriveling within us. We'll take a specific look at a few such times along the way in our series, but today we begin with the very heart of every dry season. Today we might consider what might be the driest time of all, those times that enter every life when God seems far away. In the first lesson for the day, a terrifying story to be sure, Three young men are thrown into a fiery furnace by an egomaniacal ruler of a land to which they had been taken as hostages. Their refusal to pay homage to the king was to cost them their lives. Because they chose to stand up for their faith, they were to face a grisly and gruesome death. For doing the right thing, they were going to pay the highest price of all. It's in moments like this when the desert winds can begin blowing into your life. What is God asking of me? Why is this happening to me? Where are you, God? The psalmists knew this feeling of God seeming far away. In the psalm for the day, the author writes, Oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. It's not just in that one place. Consider these words, all, all taken from the Psalms. Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? O oh God, why do you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? I say to my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me, and they say to me continually, Where is your God? God's people of long ago were no strangers to the feeling that God seemed far away. They experienced that sense of absence in their lives in ways so profound that to read their words is to be moved to tears. One other place in the Psalms where you hear the desperation of God's people experiences, experiencing God as being distant and removed has become part of the Jesus story. Both Matthew and Mark place the opening words of Psalm 22 on Jesus' lips as he dies on the cross, saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The psalmist continues, why are you far 
heart, helping me from the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer it by night, but find no rest. It was not by coincidence, nor by accident, that these particular words became part of the crucifixion story. The alienation and abandonment felt deeply by both the psalmist and by Jesus are not at all strange to God's people. There is something incredibly real about feelings of being alone, with not only God, but God's people seeming very far away. 